another 6,000 body bags. 6,000 more body bags on top of what they got. And they, there's not enough morgues to put these people in. They laid all the boxes out and they started to open them. This bust was worth about two and a half million US by the time it would have got to China. They were able to throw money at this to get them on a cargo plane, obviously paying off customs officials along the way. It was a very, very professional job. I thought the ivory trade was down, but it's just been underground. Everybody in Chad seems to have a Kalashnikov, and war is history there. So the elephants are tied into that, so there's a lot of killing. We ran into a poacher's camp that shot at us. You know, the guys there shot at us. All I was thinking about was, I want to get high, I want to get high. You know, I want to get high. I guess the junkie life was what I wanted. I had really no other aspirations. I just never tried to do anything. The only thing I really wanted to do was, you know, get loaded and sit around and, and do nothing. So that's what I did. To look back at it now and just think about holding a rifle and firing at another human being, it's gut-wrenching as well as, you know, brain-wrecking. How do you justify it? How I feel about the war today, I can sum up in one question. The same question that can be asked for Vietnam. What have we actually accomplished other than the loss of some damn fine people? When there's increased military activity in, in certain areas to try and secure the natural resources, the population inevitably starts to, to run. The displaced in Congo number in their millions. They have no access to any medical care, any health care. Sometimes they have to walk for days before they arrive in safety. This year was a, a young girl when she was first diagnosed with uh, cancer. She had become exposed to radiation when she was a kid, like about two years old, and she ran out to play. And on that day, it was raining black, and it was oily, and it was referred to as the black rain of Chernobyl. And nine years later, she comes down with leukemia. I met her in the hospital, she was about 16. This 16-year-old, really beautiful, teenager. I got back the next day and Elise was in a coma. My dad needs help shaving, bathing, dressing, getting his shoes on and off. He has to be given pills twice a day. His meds need to be managed so we'd get the right pills at the right times. I'm always struggling with the feeling that I don't have enough time and attention to pour on the children. I'm really scared that they're going to feel like the day Poppy moved in is when they lost Mommy and Daddy. I was a photojournalist with U.S. News and World Report. I was also a blur to my wife Deirdre, her pathological tolerance long ago worn thin. As she was heading to the hospital with her second miscarriage, I was heading to Baghdad to cover the American invasion of Iraq. I hated myself for this, for not giving her a child for being consumed by my job, for leaving her again, but how to stop moving. I was really scared not to fall off from the car because I was sitting just at the side, the edge of the car, and behind me, there were always guys fighting. 
Get off, get off from my leg, my leg, please, my leg. The land isn't ours necessarily. You know, God put it here, if you will and we're just using it. The Cagwins were using it before us, and we're using it now, and someone else will probably use it somewhere down the road for something else. Since Katrina, I've had three jobs. Four. Three. Trinity, Ray's, well, four, yeah, four. Sometimes I get so sad. I should be worried about two holes being punched in my head. I should be worried about brain surgery. You wonder if you'll be a good parent? Or a good husband? Or if you'll just fuck it all up? I had a bad feeling before he left. He didn't realize how bad it was going to be. If he'd got back alive, he never would be the same person anyway, obviously, because of what he'd seen, what he'd already done. When I was down at Fort Bragg the day he left, he and I went for a little walk. I told him, I, I, and I did, I knew in my heart that he was never coming home. He was too gung-ho to do a good job. And I came home and started planning his funeral. Have you thought about what you're going to do when she passes? Oh, I'll stay here with him. I wouldn't leave him for anything. No. Uh -oh. He'd need me more than ever then. Oh, Pappy, Pappy, Pappy. <laughs> He's my buddy all the way.